All right, Barack at the Yahweh, Barack at the Yahweh Shai, Barack at the Yahweh, Barack at the Yahweh Shai, Kohala, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash. That's all praises to Heavenly Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. The martyrs of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who rule well and who silence his truth. Okay? And uh, Shalom, Wa Barak, Yom Nahabakar, and peace and blessings to the elect. Lord's well, this is an edifying video. All right, this is Matthew 24. In verse or 30, it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And this is red letters. So this is Yahweh Shai speaking of his return, of his second coming, the future prophecy, the, the main prophecy in which we are waiting for, the return of our Lord to deliver us from this captivity. All right, it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. All right. And what's, what sparked this video is that was is this verse right here. And the part that says, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. The word tribe means family. So you can replace it with all the families of the earth or all the different nationalities and races of people of the earth are going to mourn. The so-called Chinese, so-called white, so-called uh, Indian, two-thirds of, of the nation of Israel. They're going to mourn. All right, and why are they going to mourn? Because the Lord is going to be killing them. All right, the Lord is coming with a great slaughter. Okay, verse 31, And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together as he elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. All right, and as the Lord, simultaneously as he's destroying, um, he's cleansing the earth by way of fire and destroying these heathens, he's going to be delivering his elect simultaneously. All right, this is the book of Isaiah 63. And um, I'm just going to get to the point. Verse 4 it says, For the day of vengeance is in my heart. All right, because the Lord is coming back to bring vengeance. And he's waiting on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father, patiently waiting to bring this vengeance in his, in his heart because he, he wants it, he desires it. It says, In the year of my redeemed is come. And simultaneously, he's going to deliver and redeem his elect, which is a small remnant, small number. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 15. It says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So the Lord is coming. He's going to bring forth his anger and his anger is going to manifest by way of fire. Okay? Fire from those thermonuclear missiles. All right? And then also, um, fire from the chariots. Verse 16, it says, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right, the slain of the Lord shall be many. So that's why all the tribes of the earth are going to mourn, because the Lord's going to come back. He's going to slaughter the majority of the people that are on the planet Earth. All right, the rest of the heathen nation are going into slavery, and then the remnant of Israel is going to be put on high. They're going to be exalted. All right, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he come up with clouds. Clouds represents the chariots. That's why the Lord, one of the Lord's title is the Lord of hosts. Host means army. The Lord's army, um, they fly via the chariots. All right. They move according to the chariots. So behold, he come up with clouds and the Lord himself is going to be in a chariot. He's going to be in a very big chariot, the biggest chariot of them all. All right. The fathership. Okay. So it says, behold, he come up with clouds and every eye shall see him. They also which pierce him. All right, which proves reincarnation. It says, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, uh, Aman or Tawa. Aman means so it shall be, Tawa means good. All right, and um, this is a good thing, but the scriptures say that all kindreds, so all people of the earth shall wail because of him. Why is that? Because the Lord's going to be bringing forth devastation that hasn't been seen, okay, and that will not be seen. All right, matter of fact, let's get this real quick. Since I said that, it's Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. It says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince was standing for the children of thy people. All right, and that's part of the host of the Lord. Michael's going to be coming back with our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right, so to help defend the elect, which is that small remnant of the nation of Israel. It says, And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. All right, and the part of that trouble, or the main part of that trouble, is the fact that the Lord's going to be, Shooting lasers from his chariots 
destroying people uh, by way of his chariots. All right, that's a type of trouble that won't be seen again. All right, and that hasn't been seen before. Okay, it's going to have the whole earth wailing, everybody on the earth wailing. All right, it says, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that should be found written in the book. All right, so destruction and salvation are hand in hand. While the majority of the people were being destroyed, the elect, those that are giving their body as a living sacrifice, living their life for Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, they're going to be delivered because they're found written in that book of life. All right. Now, this is the book of Second Ezra, the 13th chapter. I'll start at verse 1. It says, And it came to pass after seven days I dreamed a dream by night. So Ezra saw the, the vision, the, the prophecy of Yahweh Shai's return. Verse 2, it says, And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the ways thereof. And beheld, and I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. That man that waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, that's Yahweh Shai. All right? Coming with thousands of angels, man. All right? It's not going to be an alien invasion. It's going to be a holy invasion, man. All right? It's going to be so far beyond. It's, it, what we're reading right now is not even fathomable, man. The whole heavens is going to be covered by chariots. And it's going to be led by Yahweh Shai, a big, strong, so-called black man. All right. And simultaneously, they're going to be destroying people, man. All right. So it says, And I beheld and lo, the man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. Fear, man. People are going to be dying of heart attacks because of the fear. All right. People are going to be shitting on themselves, peeing on themselves, throwing up on themselves. Shaking, okay, rightfully so. All right, but because they're going to see the great power and the glory of the Lord. All right, verse 4 says, and, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it faileth the fire. So those those laser beams, okay? Verse 5 says, And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. And this is Esau. And it says out of the sea because um, the way you say heaven in the Hebrew is uh, my, uh, how do you say heaven? Shemayim, Shemayim, all right? Shah, the prefix Shah is the, means pertaining to, and Mayim means water, pertaining to the waters. All right, so that's why in the English translation it says sea, but it's talking about the heavens. The Lord's not coming out of the sea or, or the, the earthly waters. He's coming out of the heavens, all right? which is the waters pertaining to the water, Shemayim, okay? And those that try to subdue them are these wicked Edomites, all right? Because they're going to be fighting until the end, okay? Because what? The Lord is a man of war. So the Lord the Lord doesn't, he, he's going to take the kingdom with ease, but he wants a little bit of resistance, man. The Lord wants to use his power and his might. So these Edomites, are, they're going to fight the Lord and they're going to lose miserably, all right? Verse six, it says, but I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. So that's talking about that fathership that Yahweh Shai is on. It's going to be so big, it's, it's likened unto a mountain. It says, but I would have seen the region or place where, where out the hill was graven, and I could not. All right, because it's not a mountain. Verse 8, it says, and after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet durst fight. All right, so, yeah. These Edomites, they were they're afraid, but they still fought because that's the spirit of the Lord upon them. Because the Lord wants to wants resistance, all right. But He's going to prevail and destroy these Edomites. It says, "And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war." Because that's how the Lord's not going to have to do anything. It's going to be easy for him to, to take take out these Edomites. It says, "But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth." As it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips as a flaming breath and out of his tongue, he cast out sparks and tempests. You see. That's talking about the destruction from those chariots, how the Lord's not got to do anything, but those chariots are going to put in the work. All right. It's going to finish off these Edomites. All right. And it's going in vivid detail. All right. Verse 11 says, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath and the great tempest. And fell with violence upon the multitude which were prepared to fight and burned them up every one, so that upon the sudden of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. All right, so Edges was even afraid of the destruction. All right, 
But I'm going to end it on that. All right, Lord's world is edifying. Call Lord, you help us and y'all shy. All right, that belongs to the apostles and that was a great millstone. Peace and blessings, city elect. Shalom.